Pika. Hi. How's it going? Yeah, it's going good. Thank you. Okay. So, you know, lead me through. Like, what would you like to know? Okay. What um, would your readers like to know? Because I don't want to prattle on about unnecessary things. Just, yeah. So tell us what you're sort of doing now, in, apart from being in lockdown, obviously. <laughs> yeah, apart from being in lockdown, I'm working on my book. Amazing. Um, yeah, I, I'm a published author. Mm-hmm. Um, my first book is called The Billion Dollar Dream. And um, uh, currently I'm working on this piece, you know, this crime novel. Yeah, with, uh, Yeah, yeah. With a female um, character as the lead detective. And it is set in India. Mm. Oh, sounds very interesting. Uh, I look forward Mm. to that. Thank you. (laughs) So, uh, tell us a little bit about what your disability is specifically and how how it sort of came about for you, if you don't mind. Yeah, that um, I am um, considered 100% legally and medically blind. I, or rather you can say clinically blind. I suffer from a condition called retinitis pigmentosa. Uh It's a degenerative um, uh, kind of blindness. So it's um, it's hereditary. Mm. It it it's a congenital thing. I inherited it from some blessed ancestor. I don't know who. Some relation, uh, distant or near. I really don't know. But I think my parents were carriers of the damaged gene and so yeah. I got it yeah most unfortunate but there you go mm, but of course. yeah I mean it's what it is yeah it's, yeah it is what it is so well no complaints of course well, well, I think are plenty of- you're not letting it really define you you're still but you're still successful you're still doing everything that you want to yeah do. it's really awesome it's really awesome to see yes 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 because um you know um Life is, you know, you can complicate something or you can make something um, very difficult, very simple. Mm. It's really in how you view your life and how you view, yeah. It's all about the outlook. So that's, yeah, it's about the outlook. It's about the perspective and it's about your attitude in itself, you know. Mm. I could have just said, okay, this is too difficult. I don't want to do anything. I will just, you know, sit here and mourn my fate. Mm -hmm. Or there was another choice. I could get up, kick the wall down and say, you know what? I'm going after my dream and I'm going to realize everything that I want. It's incredible that you're already already published. You've got another book on the way. You're not not just, you know, moping. You're just getting out and doing the best you can, being the best woman you can. Yes. Hmm. Yes. That's all that we can hope to be, be the best you that you can ever hope to be. And uh, yeah. Prior to starting my, you know, embarking on my career as a writer, I used to work in human resources yeah. for 10 years, for more than a decade, in fact, like about 12 years. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, and I've served in some really wonderful places and some really not so wonderful places, but it's all in a day's work. <laughs> oh, yes. You have your own <laughs> Yes. So, you know, I'm from India and, uh, you know, I have, you know, in addition to my um, physical challenges related to the disability, I also have to face societal and cultural challenges yes. because pe- yeah, people in um, my country have di- a different view towards persons with disabilities mm-hmm. and it's an attitude that's been entrenched, so entrenched deep within their uh, psyche and it's really yeah. hard to bypass that, you know. It's really hard to, yeah, circumvent that. And, yeah. How, um, how would yeah. you say sort of India's sort of perspective on disability is different to the UK's? It is sympathy rather than empathy. I would prefer empathy, you know, with an um, eye towards inclusivity uh, rather than sympathy and pity because that's not going to help anybody. No, we no, just want to be, yeah, we just want to you know, do the same, do the things that others are doing. And we don't want to, you know, carry this tag, this label of the, you know, the disability is not our identity. That's the whole thing. And uh, 
thankfully attitudes are slowly but surely changing and people are becoming you know people and organizations are becoming more oh, yeah. inclusive as we speak still a long way to go you know in infrastructure wise and attitude wise we still have a long way to go but yeah. you know at least there's been a start <laughs> yeah that's yeah mm. exactly we'll get there eventually i'm sure yeah we'll get there <laughs> eventually mm. so just thinking about sports i was wondering yeah. what do you think of sport do you like any specific ones you want to talk about that i love sports i love i love swimming tennis watching tennis especially in the wimbledon championships uh-huh. has been something um that's very important to me like uh, you know yeah i could probably tell people i could probably lecture people on a serve, what's a serve and volley and what's a baseline shot or you know <laughs> what's what so you know i started watching wimbledon with my limited field of vision when i was 9 years old Oh really wow yeah and i had wanted to play but um, unfortunately the infrastructure here wouldn't allow it at that point but um, you know i have a friend who is blind who is into sports and thankfully you know where she lives from childhood she was able to take part because she has she grew up in a bigger metropolitan city right in mumbai and uh, she has um, done very well with blind cricket and uh, uh, blind blind athletics javelin and uh, um long jump and stuff yeah so is there is there quite a few opportunities would you say for sort of blind athletes like around india to sort of get involved no, no i mean there are opportunities but not very many in the sense they are scattered in very few parts of the country the bigger cities you no know, the metropolitan cities basically yeah and um, there are very few people exposed to that that's the whole point no. in india we have everything available okay it's not about availability it's there but accessibility is not there in the sense hmm. people from you know different strata of society are not able to access these facilities no. it's not that they are not there they are there but you know accessibility is denied um right. um not directly but because of a lot of other um hindrances like you know getting there um, oh. just because where they are just because of where they are living and uh, um financial constraints and um familial attitudes and you can yeah yeah, yeah and societal attitudes yes 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 i was just mm. going to say is is it are they quite visible like when promoted all these like ways to for blind athletes to get involved or is it quite do you have to sort of be in the know to find out where these are uh if you are within the community uh if you are connected to mm. um you know other people you can get to know all these things yeah but if you are not connected then you know you don't really get to know um how these things work and how to access them um, that's the problem yeah. so it's all about and you know um people don't really you know even today you would be astonished people don't really come, um you know especially if a child is disabled in the family or if um let's say uh, somebody is blind or whatever the parents aren't very forthcoming about it to the other people you know others of right. society yeah. so if they start talking if communication improves mm-hmm. um people would be connected more and they could have better access to these facilities but they are there but the dialogue and, you know just be more yeah open. communication yes communication is the key mm. and communication is very important yeah oh absolutely and uh, i completely agree i think once people you know they talk about things more openly it will open so many more doors so yes right and yes do you think because of uh, not just in india but you know in general do you think that sort of maybe blind people might be a bit afraid or apprehensive to get involved in sport especially if they don't know like a, where opportunities are it might be a bit daunting for them yes yes um first of all um it is a challenge to live life every day 
yes um and for um someone to go beyond that particular challenge to do other things it mm-hmm. requires um more courage and um like you know you have to overcome that mental barrier of uh, your own uh, reticence yeah. that you know um will i be and then self belief of course um it requires a lot of self belief especially sports something as physical as sports because yeah. um yeah if it is something um uh mental that's different if it is something intellectual that's different all these things can be like you know we do have ways to circumvent barriers and um, um yeah. get things done but sports is such a physical activity so in order to do that it requires a certain amount of mental strength and will power and oh. the courage to come forth with it come forth and say okay i want to do this yeah there are people coming out to do that i mean yeah um, an en- an entire uh, food uh, i think it was a football team or a cricket team i don't know one uh, particular sports team was formed entirely of um, blind athletes blind players yes. that was really i mean amazing to read and to see so basically things are becoming better with in terms yeah. of um, sports for um blind i mean you you can see um somebody who is blind in the paralympics going for uh, gold in tennis and stuff yeah so i'm looking at like the uk like there's a lot of organizations that are popping up now you've got sort of yeah. blind sport you've got metro sport and you've got all these yeah. cool articles and content like how how um people who have vision impairments can get involved which is really good and it's it's open yeah. that discussion which is i think is so important you know i once went to this party of um you know entirely of persons with disabilities yeah. there were about 10 of us i think it was a party um, with dancing and such yeah. so rather than let go and uh, dance individually and get lost in the crowd what we did was we just formed a chain we just linked arms with one another so we know where we are yes. and we just started dancing to the music Oh, that's so lovely. you know you that's, can that's, yeah that's lovely i mean I'd, i'd like to do that you know it's it's awkward dancing <laughs> by yourself so yes get, get everyone together that's lovely yeah so you know we <laughs> could all have fun and not you know be anxious about oh my god will if i you know what if i step this way will i get lost will i <laughs> find my way back to uh, where i have to be hmm. mm. Uh, what if i don't know the person next to me what if they don't help me we just find ways to do stuff so you know when that can be done sports can be done as well yeah i think it's, it's i think it's all about attitude every all these different facets of life it's just how you look at things and i think you're just a great example of not letting yes things get in your way and that yeah you, that you could apply that to anything in your life which is amazing yes yes I think that's quite inspiring for a lot of us who are like quite anxious or like with withh- withhold ourselves from doing things we want to yes. do. Yes. You you you've got all this going on but you're still doing all these amazing things. Yes. So yes. you know, people should uh, take a leaf out of your book. I think. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. And yeah. as far as this covid changing things for us, it's made things a bit more difficult than they already are. Oh yeah. But we'll find a way because you know see touching is such an important form of communication for those who cannot see if oh. you know what i mean that must it must be it yeah. must be strange no. i'm just have, haven't been going out much no and i haven't been like meeting people but um mm. we are finding ways like but social distancing with blindness is a bit difficult of course yeah it takes away that sort of intimacy that you have with people yeah exactly it's a shame and um, it's really really i mean when people who are sighted want are craving to hug the, uh, their, their loved ones mm-hmm. it's doubly so for us and oh, uh, yes yeah that's just such very you know very important and for that one reason i hope this whole thing goes away soon yeah as maybe. suddenly as it came mm-hmm. i know i yeah. i think i think you know if everyone does the right thing and sticks to the rules it shouldn't be too long until we can all you know get back to normal and breathe in peace <laughs> yes fingers crossed all right then yeah well it was absolutely yeah amazing. thank you very much it was lovely right. speaking to you and you yeah right, yeah bye bye, bye.